Looks like everybody's scrambling for New Year's Eve dates. Well, I'll tell you somebody who's not going to have a date. Oh. I have to keep typing flabby, four foot two, three pack a day carnivore, and 66 nubile young women to light cigarettes upon demand. No, it doesn't really say that, does it? Hey, how's the personal business going? Oh, you asked the wrong question there. <sighs> I mean, would you look at this? Look at all this. Desperation has finally sunk in. Everybody's racing to find the person of their dreams before the end of the year, huh? Nothing. I don't know what it is. But it must be contagious, because it's all over this office. No, no. Uh, somebody's hitting on you? I gotta, like, go fight somebody or something? No, I don't know. It's just people have been acting all strange around here lately. I don't know. It's like some sort of virus that I hope I don't catch. Ooh, you're right. Uh, you know what? As a matter of fact, come with me. I think Dr. Spalding has just the description. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. We're on break. Let's go. Yeah, I got it,
party's actually for Dylan. <sighs> Bridget wants him to forget about all the bad stuff that's happened this past year and feel like that it's a new year and a fresh start for the two of them. Your sister's amazing. She really is. I mean, I can't think of anybody in the whole world who'd be more resilient about what's happened than she. Yeah, well, it was pure hell for her at times, but she's pretty good at hiding that from Dylan, keeping his spirits up. I think his party will be a good thing. I wish we could go to the party together. I thought you had something to do at the country club. Ugh. Another one of those mob scenes with some kind of forced gaiety that culminates exactly at the stroke of 12. No, thank you. Um, well, actually, I, uh, I, I was hoping for, for a more kind of private celebration. How private? Maybe just for me and a teensy, teensy, teensy little bag of confetti. Oh, yeah, right. Clock's gonna strike 12, and little Vanessa's gonna disappear, and none of the family will be curious of where you went. But you said that we had to start watching our backs now that Josh knows you're seeing somebody. This radar is gonna be an overdrive. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I was just remembering the expression on his face when he caught us necking. Uh -huh. Well, I almost caught us necking on the front porch. Well, that's the way we need to keep it, almost. Yeah. Now, I know you're trying to protect me, but don't worry. I think... I think really what I have to do is make sure that Josh gets the light so that he's a little less interested in living vicariously. Poor Josh. Yeah. I'd like him to feel the way I do every time I come in here. Just, just that I'm safe and that I'm nourished and that whatever I am, it's okay. And that's all because of you. Wonderful, marvelous you. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Marvelous. Yeah. You. Mm -hmm. You know, not all of us possess the free time you have right now. Some of us have jobs and can't afford to throw those jobs away to go off to find ourselves. Gosh. I didn't leave Spalding to indulge myself, Josh. Oh. I left because I didn't like what it was doing to me. Uh-huh. Stole away everything that I love. Well, maybe you should have thought about that before you put this company through the ringer. Now, I'll tell you what, Mindy, I'm going to go work in your office, okay? Since my office seems to have become the, the Wait, Lewis Oil Memorial he Singles left Bar. Left when my desk becomes What's available, let me know, all right? Oh, so just God. let him go. Let him go. Let him go, okay? He obviously doesn't understand. Understand what? He thinks that because you and I are not living together anymore, that it's over. That there's no way that we're going to be able to work things out. What he doesn't understand is that Christmas changed everything. And ever since Christmas, Melinda, I've been able to think of nothing else but New Year's Eve. Now, that is a time to make promises. That's a time to make plans for the future, and that's exactly what I would like to do. Now, I would like us both to walk into the country club together with you on my arm, the way we did at our engagement party, so that everybody sees that you and I are together again. Nick, I haven't even thought about what I'm going to do on New Year's Eve. Well, I'll think about it right now. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. I just assumed that after what happened on Christmas... Christmas that... was nice, okay? We had a nice moment together. But if you think that was some sort of unspoken promise that everything's going to go back to the way that no, it was... No, no, it's not going to be the way it was. It's going to be even better. Well, it's not if you want me to do something and you don't even ask me first. You just take it for granted that we're going to spend New Year's Eve together? Um, <laughs> look, excuse me. I, I thought it was a special day, okay? And I thought that you would want what I want. You know, I hope you realize that if we don't do this, that everybody's just going to assume that... Who's everybody? And what does it matter what anybody thinks about us? You never used to care what people thought No, before. look, I don't give a damn if people judge us, okay? What I want is... Look, what I want is I want to be able to show you off, okay? I would like to walk into a public place with a big smile on my face and say, Look, my wife has not given up on me. 
you haven't, have you? <sighs> not... No, not completely. But I'm a long way away from making up my mind about anything, and it scares me that you don't know that. What is this about? What do you mean? Are you afraid it's going to look like you were too easy on me, that you didn't... I'm not afraid how else? it's going to look. You're the one who's afraid of that. All I want right now is some time to myself to figure out how you and I got so far off the track. That's all. Well, that is easy, Melinda. That's easy. I'll tell you how we got far off track, okay? I allowed my job to eat away at my life. No, that that's is not all. all it is. That's part of it, but you're not the only person who lost sight of something I did, too. I lost sight of myself, Nick. I was trying to be somebody that I'm not, and I just want to understand why that happened. I just don't want to get all dressed up and go out to the country club. I want to spend some time by myself. I want to put on my old favorite red boots, and I want to go out to my old favorite roadhouse. Right, okay, okay, look, you don't have to paint in the blanks for me, okay? Look, at least I'm the one that's trying here, Melinda. It seems that there's more than I'm your work. I'm trying. Why don't you just try to understand that I need some time to myself. I need some space right now. You want some space? Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, I you do. Space? I do. All right, fine. Look, Melinda, you got space. I'm sorry. I'm in such a bad mood, really. I, I needed this. I guess I needed to admit it. I really did. I mean, here I am. Noticing that people would love to have this job, an undemanding job where you just type personal ads all day long. Instead, I'm acting like I'm standing on my feet for eight hours doing brain surgery. You sure this doesn't have anything to do with Roger Thorpe? I mean, I saw the way you reacted when he stormed into my Uncle Ed's at Christmas. Is all this with Holly and him got you that upset? Oh. You want to tell me why? Not really. Okay. Okay. I won't. I won't press. Good luck. Likes kids in whitewater rafting? Whitewater rafting. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I get nervous when the jacuzzi's too high. <laughs> oh, sorry. My mistake. Hey, Matt. Hey, there you are. was just asking what happened to you. Had a late lunch. Woo! Well, that was some late lunch. People from, uh, from Grandview, huh? Uh, no. Uh, no, actually, they canceled. Mm. But uh, then I ran into an old college friend of mine, and uh, uh, one thing just led to another, and we got to talking. And... Sorry. How did the mineral rights meeting go? Oh, it went, uh, it went great. Just, uh, just terrific. Of course, it would have gone a lot better if you had been there, you know, to, to fill me in. Most of this report is written in Spanish. Gosh. Your Spanish is better than mine. Yeah, well, that's not the point, Vanessa. The point is you were supposed to be there. I'm... I'm tired of wondering where you are. I'm tired of making excuses to other people as to where you are, okay? <laughs> to the mineral rights? No, not, not the mineral rights people. To HB, to Wanda, to your own son. Wait a minute. Let's leave my son out. Well, I'm sorry. I would love to leave your son out of this, except for the fact that he's been asking me like crazy about you, and I don't have any answers for him. And that makes me a little nervous, okay? I know that you think that I'm guilty of criminal neglect, but I think that we're just dealing with a normal adolescent. And my goodness, you've seen that sign on his door. It says, keep out. And he means it. I mean, just the other day I went to him and I said, hey, honey, do you want to go and get a bite to eat with me? And he looked at me as if I was stark raving mad. I mean. Really? Yes, what self-assessment. Josh, come on. You remember you in that age. You didn't ever want to go and have lunch with your mother. And I understand that. I try and give him some space. But the problem is, the very next day, because he is still a boy, he changes his mind. And then he decides he wants to get attention. And he goes to you, and he complains. That's all. Fine. Whatever. <clears throat> Until I see some signs.
signs that he's really suffering? You know, that his grades go down or that he's losing all his friends. I'm just going to assume that he's indulging in one of the greatest pleasures of being 13, which is trying to make your mother feel miserable and guilty. Okay. Um, I'm going to cut out early, all right? So I'll see you then. Wait a minute. I am sorry I was late for the meeting. And I'm not trying to just brush all your concerns about my son aside. Listen, it's your life, okay? It's your life. You've been telling me for a long time to go out and get a life of my own, and that's exactly what I intend to do. Excuse me. Well, I'm sorry that more people weren't home. Right, now, I know you didn't get much from Miss Harris downstairs because it's just kind of hard to understand when she forgets to put in her teeth. <laughs> well, I could hear that she's very fond of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she is. Oh, well, now, I'm sorry that we missed Raymond across the hallway. I'm telling you, he usually has his ear to the floor, and if there's anybody in the neighborhood who has any idea about who's been setting his fire, he, believe me, he would have heard about it. What? But, I mean, you did say you were in the neighborhood digging up leaves for the news, right? Yes, that's what I said. I guess my mistake is in thinking that it would get me invited into your apartment. But you said that you wanted to talk to people in the building. And I have. But now we're here. And there's the door right there. Except we're on the outside and it's locked. <coughs> Joey, okay. I, I see what it's not what you say. It isn't real. I'm glad you came. What, are you afraid I'm going to take out my white gloves and, and test your furniture for dust? <laughs> of course not. Of course not. I'm beginning to feel like a door-to-door -door salesman. All right. Guess you want me to leave. Okay. Wait a minute, Jilly, Jilly, Jilly. Okay. Okay. That's right aside. You win. Now, you sure that you're ready for this, right? keeping things under wraps around here. Actually, I told you, some of the residents in this building, they find out what's in here, I'm not going to have it too much longer. So, not in the habit of having many visitors. Okay, Mr. Jackson. If I promise not to steal your candlesticks, will you please tell me more about this secret life of yours? Seven Entertainment News tonight at five. Uh, Hi there. I'll be with you in a second. Thank you. Uh, how about a, a cup of decaf, huh? Okay. Thanks. Hey, Josh. How you doing? Good. Good. How you doing? Good. Thanks. All right. Stuff when you get done with it. I don't know yet. You don't know? Well, no. Bridget says you're the official design consultant. Well, tell Bridget the official design consultant can't be rushed. Oh. This is work in progress. Looks more like a junkyard in progress. <laughs> well, that's because it's not finished yet. But don't you know art when you see it, David? Oh, get a grip on yourself, Matt. You're talking about art. Next you're going to be writing poetry? Eh, I don't think so, man. Tell it to that lady who gave you those silk boxes for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I bet she wouldn't mind if you threw a few roses are red and violets are blue in her direction. I don't think she'd be impressed. Would you uh, hand me that glue? What are you talking about? Why wouldn't she be impressed? What kind of a woman is she? Say, why don't you bring her to the party and we can all meet her? There you go. She can't. She's busy. <laughs> she's busy? Doing what? What do you got, a girlfriend who's going to stand you up on New Year's Eve? Say, Maggie, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Our design consultant here has a girlfriend who's going to stand him up on New Year's Eve. Look, cut me some slack, David, okay? I'm trying to get some work done here. This is what I asked. That's a little woman. I guess you're talking about Gabriella. Well, she is your wife, isn't she? I mean, that is what you want the immigration to think. She's doing a little shopping detective for Bridget. She'll be back. I'll tell you, you asked about her. She'll be touched. Hey, look, I'm not trying to bust your chops. 
You know, as a matter of fact, I think what you're doing is a very admirable thing. It's just that I don't want you to think it's going to be as easy as you think to pull the wool over the eye net. Well, then that's our problem now, isn't it? Well, I know what the law is, and if you want my opinion, I, I don't think anything is going to be accomplished by deporting Gabrielle. I think that uh, it's good for her to stay right here and for everybody else. Wow, I, I can tell it cost you a lot to say that, Detective. I really appreciate it. Well, you know, it's New Year's. You know, resolutions and all that. I'm trying to be a nice guy here. I don't know how long it's going to last. Well, though. say, maybe I can help you out. We're going to have a New Year's Eve party here. That's what all these uh, so-called decorations are for. So you're welcome to join us, uh, unless you got plans to go to that uh, party over at the country club. Are you kidding? There's no competition. Hey, that's great. So uh, feel free to bring anybody you like. Hey, the more the merrier. <laughs> hey, thanks. You know, I, uh, the person I have in mind, you know, she hates those fancy country club things even more than I do. I mean, I really am starting to see people in 20 words or less, you know? Foxy lady who loves movies, a sensitive computer programmer who loves gourmet cooking, divorced banker who... Loves money. No. I mean, really, come on. It's about time people start being a little honest, don't you say? How about this one? Um, pushy guy from prominent family seeks to impress blonde angel with trappings of obscene love. Blonde angel? Mm -hmm. Red nose. Puppy eyes. I'm sorry if I um, have been trying to impress you doing cartwheels, but that's only because, well, because I'm trying to impress you. <laughs> but moreover, I'd, I'd rather just see you smile. Well, there wasn't a smile when huh? I opened my mouth, my mouth froze. Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fine. All right, well, uh, we'll go back inside in just a second, but. Excuse me. You might have a little cold. I want to warm up. You think I can join your game? Do you know how to play? Well, you can be two pointers. You, you have to throw this into a square, and then you have to hop over and pick it up, and then hop back without losing your balance. I like that. That seems simple enough. <laughs> Famous last word. <clears throat> washing list. Oh, difficult, but... And... Welcome to park. Thank you. So, how's that, ladies? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. I'm very really impressed. Oh, thank you. Better late than never. <laughs> yeah, this used to be a very special place, Jim. Here you go. Mm-hmm. People really took care of each other, you know. Took each other to the doctor. Did a whole lot of things, you know. Tied you over with a few dollars if you didn't have rent, you know. Picked up extra groceries. I look out the window sometimes and I see some really beautiful buildings. And they're beautiful, you know. Beautiful structures designed by architects and just always thought that people would live here who would want the front walk swept. You know, put flour in the flower boxes. I mean, that's what they're there for. I don't think they ever dreamed that the windows would be smashed and you got crackheads nodding off in the hallway and dealing the 12-year-olds in the stairwell. Last 10 or 15 years of taking such a toll, it just makes my head spin. I'm telling you. And you know what I think? I think that the city, they just threw up their arms. Oh, yeah, I mean, they, they arrest the drug dealers, but they're back on the streets the next day. You know, business as usual. Watch yourself. Yeah. Not enough cops, right? But there are people like me. Oh, yeah, people who remember. People who know that it wasn't always like this. You know, I can do something. Oh, yeah, you know, if one of these so-called landlords decides he's going to try to save a few bucks, turn off the heat, no, no, I take him to court. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I see some new drug dealer trying to set up shop. Maybe, maybe I can get the cops down here, you know, and stop them before we even get started. Yeah, there's a whole lot I really want to do. But I can do something. If I leave, if I leave, it's just like I'm giving it over to all of them, saying, go ahead, take over the street. I certainly understand that. Mm. However, it doesn't excuse...
explain why you didn't want me to see your apartment. So, does this happen often? Maybe I'm not as brave as you are, or as committed as you are. I certainly don't... I hope that you don't think that I'm spoiled by my background, so that I can't appreciate what you're doing here. After all, I'm in television news, you know. I've been to a few crime scenes before. <laughs> yep. You are tough as nails. Start serving dinner in a couple minutes. Do you want something? Ah, uh, no. It's too disgusting to eat. I can't believe I've been sitting here for an hour waiting for this jerk. What am I doing, Maggie? What am I doing? I've got to be crazy. Uh-uh. No, the guy that you're waiting for. He's the crazy one, okay? Thanks. Do you want to hold on to those dinner menus? You're expecting something, aren't you? Yes, I am. Okay. You went, Flesh. 
I've come to my senses. Put me back to work, man. I'm ready to roll. You know Fletcher's? Um, uh, yeah, he's out on assignment. You wanna leave him a message? Yeah. Tell him that I'm available for freelance reporting. You own half of a television station, Nick. Can't you hire yourself as a reporter? Well, the kind of writing I want to do, I can't do in sound bites. Besides, I've always been much more comfortable in print. Mm. Well, it's full circle time, isn't it? Off the corporate merry-go-round and back to doing your bit for humanity. I must admit, though, I thought you were going to be at Spalding for life. You know, I guess I thought a lot of things were for life. Obviously, I was wrong. Look, what's important for is me to get back moving again, and that's what I want to do. So I'm going to leave a message for Fletch on the set. Hey, clean up six two step. How you doing, Mindy? Oh, fine, thanks. Excuse me. What's the matter? You don't say hello? Hello. What is it, the hypothetical problem you told me about, <clears throat> about the reason for the crummy mood, huh? I'm fine, Patrick. Not to me, that's not. Maybe it's the company you're keeping these days, hobnobbing with the Spaldings. There's no reason to sub your friends, you know. Actually, I forgot to tell you what I thought of your abuse of power the other day. Come again? Alan Michael told me how you detained him for an hour and a half over some bogus speeding ticket. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I didn't give him a ticket. He was going 60 in a 30 mile an hour zone. You know, he was flying low. Alan Michael thinks the speed limits for people without gold cards. You know, any time I have ever gotten a ticket, it has never taken that long to be processed. You were playing games, and I have two words for you. Grow up. I gotta, I gotta tell you something, though. I mean, I, I, I cannot understand why somebody like you would have to put an ad in the personals. I mean, you're pretty. You got a good sense of humor, obviously. You're laughing at my jokes. <laughs> got a good job. That's good. Yeah, I'm the secretary. Oh, come on. Well, what is somebody your age going to do? Uh, run IBM? The point is, the point is, I can't figure out why a thousand guys are not knocking down your door to go out with you. I mean, guys your age, of course. Of course. <laughs> I mean, I just think there must be something wrong with the world. Well, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Hmm. But you know what I honestly think? I honestly think it all has to do with your attitude. And I guess I haven't been a whole heck of a lot of fun the last couple of months. You know, I was, um, kind of very hung up on this guy, and, well, I guess I was down to the dumps after he left. And, um, you know, I put on a good face, and I thought I was smiling, but the only person I was really fooling was myself. And guys aren't stupid. They pick up on it. They know my heart wasn't into it. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you, uh, you put out these kind of feelings when you don't even intend to. You know, when my wife, um, <laughs> when my wife died, um, I, I couldn't have a conversation with another woman for the longest time. I mean, I, m m much less date. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> when I finally did decide to commit, um, it was with your older sister. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Harley. Uh, she's terrific, by the way. She's wow. really great. Unfortunately, at the time, uh, I was not. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, don't knock yourself too hard, you know? People can be really terrific, and it's just not meant to be. Well, no. It was more than that. It was, um, it was this place. It just, uh, this town holds so many memories for me, you know? I, uh, I left, and, uh, and then I came back, and ever since I've been back, I've been wondering why, you know, what am I doing here? I mean, sometimes, you know, you just have to make a clean break, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you still could, couldn't you? No, no. My kids are here, the, you know, the friends and the school, they're ingrained here. I don't, I, I don't think it would be, uh, be fair to yeah. relocate them. And who's worrying about being fair to you? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. It's true, though, isn't it? I mean, seriously, you can't spend your entire life worrying about what's going to make your kids happy. First of all, they probably don't even know what makes them happy. And second of all, the only thing that really works is if you're happy. It's true, you can't be a good parent unless you're really, really happy. And trust me, I know it. I'm living it firsthand. Sorry, I didn't mean 
of the cloth and left her name on it. It's okay, I appreciate it. Well, you know what? It's been kind of cold out mm. here after all. You know, I better get going. But, um, listen, you know, my car actually is right down the street. I can give you a lift. No, no, I'm a rugged man. Oh, I'm going right. to walk for a bit. Shame for that white yeah, water sure. acting. <laughs> but, um, but thank you. Thank you, this, uh, this has been very nice. Here. Yeah. Oh, wow, nice. what a grip. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. my presence on New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. Come on, think of it. Hop scotch our way into 1995. It'll be magic. I don't think I ever learned how. I guess we're going to have to teach me. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. It could be my honor to cast the first stone. Yeah, Ben, you tell your father that I'm sorry I missed him here over at the rag, but okay, I'll get in touch with him later on, okay? All right, thanks a lot. that very much.